So there we go, you can see we've got infinite lava in there now. Very good for uh, testing out the setups like I'm doing right now. Now we definitely want to get towards these uh, better liquid ducts, but for now um, we're going to have to use the opaque ones. Uh, sorry, fluid ducts they're now called, they used to be called liquid ducts. Um, now the great thing about fluid ducts is that they won't connect if the same uh, type they only connect if the same type of uh, fluid is in the pipes. They won't connect if, say, lava and water flow next to each other. So that's a really good thing. So, we need to... Um, because the creative tank, um, or the portable tank in general, can be... Base, uh, oh, actually, no, we need to connect it from the other side. That's what's happening. Um, so basically, we can get our crescent hammer out here um, and change this so that it doesn't connect at all. And we can go underneath, like this, and connect it up. There we are. So hopefully, that will work. Or do we need to... Oh, there we go. Flipped it. It's working now. So you can, there you go. You can see the um, engines are on. We've got lava flowing through and a whole load of power is being built up. So again, these will produce uh, 40 RF per tick, but they'll just be a little bit more efficient because you're using lava. So they'll last for a lot longer. So let's put down these energy conduits and flip them like that. Now you'll see that we're starting to gain a huge amount of power in our hardened energy cell. So let's add a few more machines. Let's add... An induction smelter. Induction smelter is a really, really cool item. It basically can melt two metals together to get a completely new type of, of metal completely. So um, for this, I'm going to turn off all of the inputs and outputs just so it doesn't interfere with anything around us. So basically what this can do is if we get a few different types of ingots, for example, we get gold and we get silver. Gold and silver together will smelt together, and I'm not sure if this is a real thing or not, but you'll get Electrum. I'm pretty sure it's not real, but a lot of uh, mobs, mods seem to add it, so they must have got their idea from the same source. Um, electron, uh, electrum ingots, uh, they're basically a way of basically being conducti conductive in the mod, and uh, you can make uh, dust out of it and stuff like that. And you can also, of course, use it in the uh, smeltery to make a molten Electrum, but it's basically used as the con conduct conductive sort of material in thermal expansion. And the induction cylinder has a load of other uses. For example, if we get a piece of uh, lead, a lead ingot, and we get ourselves some obsidian dust, or some pulverized obsidian, which you can get in the um, pulverizer. Here we go. So it's eight, I think, to one lead. And you get yourselves two hardened glass. Let's test that out. There you go. You can see it's cooking up now. And this hardened glass, of course, can be used to make your fluid ducts, your better fluid ducts. So let's see what they look right, like right now. So let's get some fluid ducts. Some better fluid ducts, of course. Use these hardened glass with a bit of copper, so not too bad to make once you've got the, the, uh, the hardened glass. All we have to do is just replace it all. Like that. And uh, of course you need to, uh, because this has got liquid and these hasn't, you have to connect them together with a wrench. And there you go, you can see the water now flowing through the pipes. Pretty cool. And we're going to do the same with these pipes. You can see that the lava's flowing through it there. Looks really, really nice. Let's just right click there. There we are. And you can see lava flowing through them. Now I believe that if we turn the time to night, then these actually emit a little bit of light. We can't really show that very well because there's torches over but these definitely do show light and that's, that's pretty cool. Okay, so we've got our awesome fluid ducts now, the ones that we can see through, the transparent ones. Now let's do the same uh, with pretty much the rest of our flu uh, liquid ducts from now on. So the next uh, type of engine that we can use is pretty cool. We can now use, um, what type of dynamo can we use? We can use the compression dynamo. And this uses, um, generates energy again, requires fluid fuel to burn. So basically you can use um, like stuff like biofuel or fuel or oil. Um, to power these, uh, biofuel and fuel. Uh, biofuel is from forestry, sorry, and um, the fuel and oil is from Billcraft. For this, we're going to, of course, need a completely different type of um, fuel altogether. So let's get another creative portable tank. Fluid ducts. And we're going to need, in this one, let's use fuel as an example. Of course, you can, as I said, you can use biofuel or fuel, uh, 
biofuel, fuel, oil, all those different types of, I think ethanol as well, stuff like that. So basically like hydrocarbons basically in a way. So we just put this in and now we should, if we wrench this, see some fuel flowing through and hopefully, uh, oh it does look like we're going to, what do we need? What are we missing here? Do we need to just disable these? Miller buckets. Are we going to need some water in these maybe? Possibly. Okay, let's hook up some water then. Let's go over here, like this, and bring some water all the way across. Uh, no, not there. So these uh, two engines here, so we just left click there. Ah, there we go. See, look, water did it for us. So water and fuel together in these compression dynamos creates, uh, again, 40 uh, uh, RF per tick. So all these create 40 RF per tick, but I would just say that these fuel ones last the longest, like the fuel lasts a huge amount of time in these engines. As you can see, it's not even used any yet. Um, while the lava has been used uh, a little bit, I think I saw it drop earlier. And the coal were, all, well, were already used about 20 in each of the, uh, each of those dynamos there. So we've got six dynamos here, uh, which is pretty cool, but we're going to need a few more machines to balance that power. So, first of all, let's get ourselves some redstone energy conduits and an energy cell. So these are a little bit more difficult to make. Uh, these are actually going to require some destabilized redstone. So we're going to need a fluid transposer, as you can see there. So let's get one of those. So, a fluid transposer. But, to get the liquid redstone, we're going to need something to melt down redstone. For that, we're going to need a uh, magma crucible. There we are. So let's set up all of these configurations. We don't want anything there, we don't want anything there, we don't want anything there. We just want an input here, an input of fluid. And then we want to output to the side. There we are. So let's put some redstone in. In there. And let's give this thing a little bit of power. Now I must warn you that the Magma Crucible uses an insane amount of power, as you're about to see. Uh, maximum power 400 RF per tick, so that's pretty much why you want this um, buffer here of the hot energy cell. Just so you can just give this Magma Crucible the energy it needs, because it just needs so much energy, it's un unbelievable. But the uh, Liquid Transpose on the other hand only uses 40, so it's not too bad. So, we're going to need ourselves the um, empty stuff now. So we're going to need our empty, where is it, our empty red energy cell frame and our energy conduits. And it's pretty simple to fill these up, you just put the empty conduit in, or the empty cell, and it just fills up like that, and there you go, you've got red energy conduit. These of course require a little bit more, they require a whole bucket, which is a thousand miller buckets, so once you've got a thousand miller buckets, this thing will fill. Okay, so these red energy conduits of course are a lot better, so we'll just replace all of these now. They look really cool as well, they look all golden and nice. And they will connect to other pipes of the same type, I think. But it basically it's like the new Billcraft pipes. You'll kind of you could create um, sort of chokes in the system where p power can't get through to where it wants to go. So that might create a bit of a problem for you if you use different types of um, pipe. But you can see here that um, we're getting to the stage where we need uh, how much do we need? We're going to need 4,000 millibuckets now. That's quite a lot. So we're almost there, I think. There we go, and that will start to. Um, process and we'll get ourselves a redstone energy cell frame which can then be used to um, make a redstone energy cell. So you just get the cell frame and then you just put a load of stuff around it um, and you get the redstone energy cell. So let's put this down and let's see how much better it is. So this is two, uh, 2 million RF I think it says there. Yeah, 2 million and this stores I think 10 million I think. So five times as much so a lot better and let's get this um, Output sorted out. So there we go, you've completely redstoneified our system. We're producing 240 RF per tick, we're storing a huge amount, and we can output at least 2000. So that's really, really good. And we've completely filled up this magma crucible, so now we've just got to wait until we fill up this massive internal buffer, and then we don't really have to worry about running out of power for very long. So there we go, that's how you create your redstone energy cells. Pretty cool. So now there's actually a few more liquids that you can get uh, in thermal expansion. Uh, there's, uh, I'll, I'll just talk you through them very quickly. Um, there's energized glowstone, which can be used for uh, making this weird stuff, which can basically float upwards. Um, but the use, there's not really much use for energized glowstone apparently. 
but I see I want to disagree with that. I want to say that there's a lot more uses, but it doesn't seem to be showing them. Um, Resonant Ender has a lot more uses. Again, it's not really showing many of them, um, but I'll show hopefully once I get the thing up. And Blazing Pyrotheum's used as well. Um, now let's use for any, let's try and find an example where Molten Glowstone is used. Uh, what's the recipe for this stuff? Oh. Pyrothium is like a weird sort of substance that Thumb Expansion adds. Um, I know you can get these sort of lights. Illuminator, maybe. How do you make an illuminator? The use of that. Ah, here we go. See, so energized glowstone. You're using the fluid transposed with an illuminator frame, and you make these glowstone illuminators, which are really, really good lights. Um, so you can create it with glowstone, of course, and uh, those buckets. And uh, they can be used, oh, to fill uh, item ducts, which you haven't had a look at. And they basically create the golden pipe version of item ducts. Um, which basically just speed up the items as they go through. And that's pretty much it right now, but I'm pretty sure that they'll add a few more uses to Molten Glowstone. And Molten Ender um, is a lot better. These can be used for Tesseracts, which we haven't shown you yet. And Tesseracts are basically a way of um, transporting energy wirelessly. So you can see that it can be used to turn Sandstone to Endstone, that's pretty cool. And it can be used to turn uh, Tesseract frames into Tesseracts. So very nice indeed. It's also compatible with the smelter as well. So, we've got the, pretty much the basics of thermal expansion out of the way. Pretty much a good way to just create a little system here of uh, machines. And now, I think we need to get onto the really, really uh, interesting stuff in thermal expansion, which is the item ducts and the tesseracts. So, item ducts from thermal expansion are basically a simple way of transporting items across chests. So, if we just place two chests down like this, and like that, we can if we get some item ducts, and um, of course we're going to use the normal item ducts for this since we've uh, got the technology to make hardened glass now and also get the um, impulse ones that I'll show you in a minute but basically you just have to connect some item ducts like that, I'll make it a bit longer so I can show you like the effects of the impulse um, item duct so here you go, here's just a little basic system that you'd normally create um, let's say the output is there and the input is over there so let's just put a little thing in there, let's put a piece of hardened glass in and if we give it a redstone signal, oh no we don't even redstone signal, it just transports it instantly, you can see there the hardened glass moving along, um, I'll put something a little bit easier to see in there, I'll put a, a, a grass block in there so you can see the grass block moving along inside the item duct so it moves at a pretty substandard speed, it's not exactly the quickest thing in the world but it's not terrible either but if we add a impulse in item duct and we put something in now, like this hopper, you'll see that once it hits the impulse item duct, it shoots along really, 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 really quickly. Um, but of course we need more. I think that's the problem. It's not like a golden pipe from Billcraft. You actually need probably a full, a full set of these. Let's put the hopper in now. Let's see what happens. There you go. You can see it's moving a lot quicker now. There it goes. So... If you want to get items around really, really quickly, then use those impulse item ducts because they move stuff a lot quicker than the basic item ducts. But the basic item ducts aren't too bad. They're definitely quicker than the normal Billcraft pipes. 